This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 290 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show, Eventing Mustangs. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Our sponsors this week are Equisketch and Road to the Horse. Welcome to the Stable Scoop, with weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the stable, it's every week. They bring you the news through hail or high water, while using their tails as their own fly swatters. So sit on down and laugh till your poop, cause it's time again for Stable School. Stable School. Stable School. This is Glenda Geek. And this is Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Well, howdy, Helena. Good morning, Glenn. How are you doing today? I'm doing terrific today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the Stable Scoop Show. I just noticed something when you said it. You said episode 290. That means in 10 episodes, we're going to have 300. And that means a party, right? Yes, we have to, we have, to have a party. Have to have a party. And it'll be warm for you by then, or warmer. It'll be warmer. <laughs> and we, it'll be in April. Yeah, yeah you we'll should be, be warmer. We'll be warmer. It won't be zero anymore. It won't be zero. I won't have to haul hot water to the barn from the house anymore because my pipes have froze for oh, the third time. Oh, that's the worst. In one year. I know. It's actually not that bad. I don't know what it is. Maybe because, I don't know, <laughs> maybe because my head's in a much better place. But despite the long, this well, never-ending winter, I'm not that miserable. It's because you're in a better place. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, when, you, uh, when, you're, when your life is kind of topsy-turvy and kind of upside down, all of those things seem so much worse. Okay. So here is a bit of advice. If you live anywhere in the north of the world where winter comes and stays for a while and you're miserable, don't move south. Move a, out of your house. <laughs> get a shrink. Change your life. Do something to make to yourself therapy. happy. It's not winter that's making you miserable. It's something else. So find out what it is and exorcise it. I like that because we really don't want all the miserable people moving to Florida either. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, they can show at the Winter Equestrian yes. Festival. And then go like, home. <laughs> We have a great show planned today. We have uh, somebody who's absolutely delightful. Her name is Lisa Wallace. She is of uh, Wallace Eventing. And she was the winner of the Extreme Home Makeover a couple of years ago. She has a couple of Mustangs. Well, she has a couple of venting Mustangs, of all things. And she had made a special trip to Florida to uh, promote something. And we're going to talk about that and why she made this trip to Florida with her terrific Mustangs. And we're going to be talking all about that with her coming up. Also, I have a product review for you, something I tried out over the weekend and absolutely loved. It is horse husband approved. It gets the stamp of approval. Wow, you better guys better tune in for this. If it gets yes, horse husband approved, it's it a good is. Product. And it's something us horse husbands do not want to help with and do not want to contribute to at any cost. Would you use this product on yourself? Uh probably not. <laughs> 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 so we'll talk about what that is coming up later in the show. First, I want to talk to you about uh, a new program that we have available here for, for our avid listeners of the Stable Scoop show. First, I want to thank the listeners for listening in week in and week out. You know, Helena and I started this endeavor five and a half years ago. And you know, a lot of you have been listening for five and a half years, and we really appreciate you being here and helping to make the Horse Radio Network much bigger than we ever thought it would be. Uh, you know, you're the ones that truly make this worth doing. Helena and I, we can talk to each other, you know, any time but, and, and do, but we don't get to, to have a good time with you and to talk to the neat people that we do on the show. 
We also want to thank the sponsors who have been around uh, for a long time with us for the last five years. Without them, we wouldn't be able to produce over 3,000 episodes of the Horse Radio Network here and almost 300 episodes of the Stable Scoop Radio Show. So thanks to the sponsors for being here, and, and we love them, and we'll continue with them. But we have a new way now for you to help support the shows that you love on the Horse Radio Network, and that's by becoming an official HRN auditor. Everybody knows what an auditor is in the horse world, that you, you pay to go audit a clinic, and, or you, pay to, you, know, you can pay to audit certain events. Well, that's what we are talking about here, is for as little as $1 a month, you can show your support for the Horse Radio Network and the hosts that you love. You know, we have the best hosts in the world, and I'm not just saying that because Lena's on here. I really do have the best hosts in the world. They're a terrific group of people. Uh, they're fun to work with. I wouldn't do it unless they were fun to work with. And we hope that they're entertaining and informative as well. That and I can assure you. <laughs> I can totally attest to that. Glenn would not do this unless it was fun. That's I'm serious. True. He's shut things down and... and he has seriously shut things down just because they were not fun. Nope. That's, you know, when I got to a certain age in my life and got sick when I got Lyme disease, I said, well, you know, if I've only got a certain amount of time left, I was feeling very mortal then, uh, that I said it wasn't going to, I got to do anything I wasn't having fun with anymore. So, yeah. Yeah. so, you know, what we, what we would invite you to do is actually become a auditor or a member, if you want to, if you want to use that term. Of the Horse Radio Network. I like and member. Auditor sounds like I work for the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, uh, that's how we've officially labeled it. And people have started uh, becoming auditors already. Uh, we have a uh, number. We announced it first on this uh, Horses in the Morning show just yesterday as we're recording this. And we have people, you know, signing up to become auditors. And what, let me tell you how it works. We're using a company called Patreon to provide the back end, the support for this, to, you know, to do the payments and to provide the net network to make this work. Patreon is a company that helps artists, uh, whether they're musical, whether they're podcasters, whether they're artists who, who paint and draw, they help artists actually find support amongst their fans and be able to manage that support membership, so to speak. And, you know, similar to the way NPR does it on their own. Well, Patreon helps everybody become an NPR kind of organization. They're, That's cool. I like NPR. Yeah. And, and they're, they've been around a long time, Patreon. They do good work because they're helping all these people that have, are, do not have the infrastructure to do this themselves. And we're talking artists here. They support the arts. Okay, and uh, so and fortunately, they, can you believe they consider us artists? Yes, we're artists, <laughs> Glenn. We're artists. So this is now. This is how Glenn and I work. Glenn goes. He 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 likes to talk about something serious and important, and he goes blah 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 blah. Support us. Blah 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 blah. We're artists. Here's what it comes down to. We know you love us because we love you too. It's a really it's a nice relationship that we have, right? We don't tell you to pick up your clothes off the floor. <laughs> you show up for Stable Scoop every week. It's perfect. What we want to do is offer you even better content than we have. I know we're pretty good, but a lot more informational content is going to come out. Um, we're going to have amazing guests, and you get to participate just as if you would you would be attending one of these amazing clinics that happen around the world. So think of it that way, and it's really affordable. Patreon will help us, will help you help us, and we can continue this wonderful relationship. And we do have something that we're offering. You know, you can do as little as a dollar a month, five dollars a month, ten, twenty-five. We have premiums and incentives for the higher levels. But everybody, even at a dollar a month, you become an official auditor. We have a couple things that we're going to do for you. One is we're going to give you previews of what's coming up on Horse Radio Network. For example, if we have a new show that's coming out, you'll get to hear the test show, and we'll get your input. We, we so you're going to kind of become our focus group. For new things that we have on the horizon, we want to get input from this focus group, which we've never had before. And then also, there's going to be, Helena doesn't know this yet, there's going to be a special monthly blooper reel that is going to be put together into a little mini episode of all the bloopers from across all the shows, and that's going to be available only to the auditors. Yeah, but so. it's going to be stable scoop heavy, I'm <laughs> guessing. 
Well, bah, let's just say that we have a few more from Stable Scoop than we do any other place. And I don't know why that is. I have no idea no why, why that, that is. is. Yeah, sure you don't. <laughs> Now, but they, they, that's going to be fun, though. That's actually a really yeah. good. Our blooper reels have been really popular in the past. Well, that's going to be available now exclusively from all the shows for, for the auditors. And one other thing that we're going to do right away is that once a month, I'm going to get together and we're going to do an auditor roundtable. And we're going to get three or four of the auditors on. And we're going to do a special episode just for auditors talking about horses and the horse life and just a, a sit around a round table like we were in the tack room and just chat. And then that's good. Then we're going to make those episodes available to other auditors as well. So you'll have your own little show is what it comes down to. And then, you know, we don't want to make it sound like we're we're going to this model that the shows aren't going to be free anymore. They are. All the shows yeah. are going to be free. You'll still be able to listen. And if you can't donate, we understand. You know, uh, we're you know asking for, for money is difficult, and some people just can't do that or don't want to. And we appreciate you listening. There's another way you can help, and that's by posting the shows on Facebook. If you listen to a show you particularly like, post it on Facebook. Encourage your friends to go. Tell your friends at the barn about the Horse Radio Network. Tell every horse person person you know about the Horse Radio Network, you'll be surprised how many of your friends have never heard of it, and you can turn them on to it, and they can enjoy the content as much as you do. That is as big a help as the other thing, and we really appreciate uh, if you take the time maybe once a week to post on your Facebook page. That would help us a whole bunch as well. So that's how it works, how you can do it. It's very simple and easy. You just go to stablescoop.com or horseradionetwork.com. There's a big banner in the middle of the page. Click on it, and it'll take you to Patreon. It's so easy to sign up. It takes only a couple seconds, and they, you know, they're very trustworthy as far as, as far as your credit card or PayPal information is concerned. They take care of all of that. And all the details are there on the Patreon page so you can find out more about what the premiums are and those kind of things. So you, that's what you do to uh, become an official HRN auditor. And we appreciate you putting up with our NPR-style uh, ple- pledge drive here on Stable Scoop. I think blah, we, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and should I say like NPR does? And unless we get reach a certain amount, we're going to do this every week. No. I'm, no, <laughs> I will quit. I will quit. I will not do it. I, I hate, I'm all for the support. I really do think, I mean, one of my favorite shows on the network besides Stable Scoop is Horse Tip Daily. And I've been telling Glenn and Coach Jen forever that the information you find on that show is absolutely invaluable. I it's it's one of the the few things that I actually <clears throat> make time to like I, I don't really I, I don't have time to entertain myself. <laughs> but it's one of the few things that I really make time to tap into on a regular basis. And it's so it's that kind of information. Now Glenn and I, our our job is primarily entertainment. Sometimes we bring you some information about cool products. We always bring you cool guests. But, um, you know, it's what's important to you. And it's for me, like when I'm mucking stalls or I'm doing those little mundane chores and I've got my podcasts on, it's such a, it's such a nice way to pass the time doing things that you're not really keen on doing. So, um, if that's valuable to you, similar to the way, you know, horse tips are valuable to me, then, you know, for a dollar a month, I, I think that's kind of cool. I would, I'm, I'm on, I'm on board. Very good. Well, Helena, I got to tell you, we got to, we have to get to our first guest here. We're going to take a break for Road to the Horse. Uh, we're actually we're going to take a break for Equisketch, and then we're going to come back and talk to Elisa Wallace. And it's funny that we're talking to Elisa today because next week I am heading to Road to the Horse. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. And Elisa trains Mustangs, and of course, Road to the Horse is all about breaking babies. So uh, we're going to talk to Elisa in just a minute about her Mustangs. Glenn the Geek here. The life of horse person is hard enough, and we all hate doing the required paperwork, and unfortunately, many of us never get around to it, and it just piles up on our desk. That is about to change thanks to the Equisketch Records app for your iPhone or iPad. My wife and I use it to track our horses, and we absolutely love this thing. Equisketch Records is the most thorough and complete equestrian records app on the market today. We love this app because you can track your farrier work, your dental, your Coggins, medicines, worming, and so much more. And you can get reminders on your device when all of these things are due. You'll never forget a worming or shots or farrier visit again. 
but it not only tracks your horse. You can also manage your horse shows, including individual events. You can manage riders, including lessons and memberships and so much more. And you can sync it between your iPhone and your iPad, and all of this for the price of a couple of cups of coffee from Starbucks. Search for Equisketch Records in the iOS App Store or go to Equisketch.com. That's E Q U I S K E T C H.com. Equisketch.com. Hi, Elisa. Welcome to the Stable Scoop Show. Hi, guys. It's so good to have you. You know, we've uh, talked to you a couple of times over on the Horses in the Morning show, and it's so nice to have you over here on th- on on this side. And, you know, Elisa, we were talking... The dark about- side. The dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Elisa, we were talking about uh, the fact that uh, you were, you know, uh, you did very well at Extreme Mustang Makeover, and I'm heading to Road to the Horse next week, so that kind of reminded me of you. Um, oh, yeah. The, um, there's actually a, a couple of fellow competitors... Uh, Mary Kitzmiller, who I'm rooting for, she's uh, one of the wild cards going to Road to the Horse. And she is absolutely one of the sweetest people ever. Oh, she's so nice. Very, yes. very cool person, as is like most of the Mustang community. Um, <laughs> but she's pretty amazing what she can do at the horse. And so hopefully she, she does well. So that's, that's awesome. She's fun to follow on Facebook, too, Mary Kitzmiller. She's just fun to follow on Facebook because she's always posting the, the, the craziest stuff. So uh, she's... That's right. <laughs> well, Elisa, <laughs> you, uh, you, know, you have these Mustangs that, that you broke and you worked with uh, from the beginning, part of the, uh, the Mustang makeover. You have two, uh, Rune and wh- what's the other one again? Fledge. 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 I love that name. Where did that name come from? Sledge um, is actually named for the winged horse that is in the uh, book, uh, The Magician's Nephew, which is from the line, The Witch in the Wardrobe, The Chronicles of Narnia. Yes. So uh, it just seemed to fit him. I uh, The first time I saw him trot up to the trailer, he was like, he had wings, so it felt appropriate. So. Oh, that's, that's cool. That's pretty awesome. And he has his own Facebook page, doesn't he? He does, although I've been slacking on it a little bit. Um, <laughs> but he, he, he does have his own page and he's become quite the celebrity as everybody asks about Fledge. So it, it's nice this year to, I've let him just, um, relax and kind of grow up a little bit this past year. And, um, so this year he'll be out a little bit more because now he's five and, uh, finished growing. I think he's right at 14 hands and a quarter. And, um, <laughs> we still count quarters. We, yeah, we still I'll count that. every inch I can get. Because he, <laughs> yes, he was only 13, too, when I got him. So he's grown a fair bit. So, he's, uh, he's a stocky boy. He's, he's stocky, though, right? I mean, he kind of looks stocky in the pictures. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. people think that he really is taller than he, but he's really, he's a good what? sized little horse. I mean, uh, I actually had their DNA done, which was oh. fun. To, and um, you're able for like 25 bucks, you take um, their main samples and send them to Texas A&M, and they'll do like a genetic thing. Huh. <gasps> I didn't and, know that. Um, yeah, they're. I want to do that to of, my horse. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty fun just to see. So Fledge has they, they give you the top three breeds in the order that's most significant, and so his were. Welsh was the first one, and then Belgian Draft was the huh. second, and then the third was a New Forest Highlander pony. So that was not what I expected. Um, <laughs> wow! But it's, it's pretty cool to see. And uh, Rune, my other horse, was Hackney. Um, ha- ha- it was Hackney Shetland, and then Belgian Draft, and then Quarter Horse. I was Is- like... I wouldn't have never thought that, but okay. What, 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 I, what I want to know is where these pairings are happening. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> now, what? I got to ask you, Lisa, when I'm looking at the pictures of you down in Wellington, which we'll talk about in a minute, was the one, is Rune the one with the high action in the front? Because that would tie into the hackney thing. Well, he was, that's him doing the Spanish walk. Uh, in his normal movement, he really has, he doesn't really have a lot of me. Sledge is more so the one that has likes to kind of bring his knees up higher. So, huh. um, but but Rue really does it. He he enjoys doing the Spanish walk. So he just enjoys he showing off. Into it. 
I, I enjoy a little he, Spanish he talking myself. enjoyed that night. Yeah. <laughs> so. I guess if I were to come back as a horse, a Mustang would be it. Yeah, yeah. That would be right. But I got the right size, got the right temperament, got to be free, trainable. <laughs> Absolutely. They're, they're, they're great horses, and they come in all shapes and sizes, and uh, any type of horse. <laughs> I mean, there's horses, and they have a lot of cow fence, generally speaking. So, you know, they work good for cowboys, but then they are also fantastic athletes. So they really can work in any genre of riding. How long have you been? I'm really trying to advocate uh, adoption. How long have you been working with Mustangs? Sledge was my first one. Uh, So two two years since 2012. I mean, I've been around some Mustangs, but he's my first one that I was fully trained all by myself. And what, what, what did you find to be the most surprising thing about the breed or perhaps something that was unexpected in working with them? Well, yeah, oftentimes what's really fun and because I have enjoyed watching other horses, um, be other wild horses be trained by other trainers is you enjoy watching the transformation. But when you do it yourself, when you train a Mustang, it's not just the Mustang that's being transformed as you are as well, because there's something, which I just tend to call it magic, just because something changes. And, and what Mustangs end up doing is they teach you that there's open possibility. So anything, whatever you set your mind to, you can do. And it's, they're, I get they just change your life. Anybody you ask will tell you the same thing. You can't quite put your finger on it, but something changes and you become addicted for life and they're incredible animals. So there's a, there's a mystique to it all. Exactly. You had the opportunity to take a trip and show these boy and show these guys off, right? Uh, you, uh, which you, I weren't counting, expecting, uh, and they it came up and and you tell us about the trip that you were able to take. You're on it now, yes. actually. <laughs> um, well, I was contacted by the American Mustang Movie um, and the producer Ellie Price, who are advocates about. Uh, saving the wild horses and you know the the wild horses are in a bit of a predicament right now because there are 50,000 horses in holding facilities in government holding facilities that our taxpayers pay for and there's all kinds of budget cuts and stuff going on and they they're trying to figure out how to manage these horses so how they've done it in the past is by rounding them up putting them in these holding facilities and then adopting some out. Well, that's not really helping the numbers. So really what uh, Ellie Price in making this movie is, is trying to get awareness, trying to get the public to know that, hey, one, there are wild mustangs, which oftentimes people don't really know. Um, and two, your taxpayers' money are paying for them. And then three, they're in big trouble. So we're trying to really raise awareness and um, really trying to push, you know, the there's more avenues of, of different management that the government can do. I don't know what the answer is because it's a whole big can of worms. But uh, for me, you know, all, all I can do is really promote the horses, get them out there, and really get the public to value what incredible animals they are. And they're well, worth saving. I, yeah, I think you did. You do know part of the answer, and part you 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 acted on part of the answer, and that was finding homes for the ones that are sitting in pens all across the country. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah. there's fifty thousand of them out there. So really, and what's pretty exciting is in talking with Ellie. She's going to help me, um, and I get to go hopefully to the corrals and be able to pick out. Uh, a couple of Mustangs to really try to get them to upper level um, competition and eventing. And um, so that's, that's pretty exciting. And that's what's happened this past uh, weekend. So um, yeah, good stuff. Good tell stuff us what you, with- tell us what happened this past weekend. You went to Wellington, Florida with the Mustangs, probably the f- furthest South they've ever been. 
And uh, right. <laughs> and exactly. uh, tell us what you got to do. That I saw the pictures. It looked terrific. It was it was an amazing trip. Um, always exciting as usual. It's such an adventure. And um, my horses are always game. They travel great. And we were able to go down to Wellington because they were um, doing a uh, opening or running the trailer down in Wellington because they had a premiere down in West Palm Beach. And so I was able to, um, the first night was during the Nations Cup in the show jumping um, and got to perform there. Um which was great because it was, you never quite know how it's going to happen. And the horses were in a huge ring, and I was really proud of them. They behaved. Um, we had to do it in the beginning of uh, the competition. So um, the crowd, there was a ton of people there yet because they all showed up a little bit later, but that was okay. Uh, the following that's what night. Hap- that's what happens with jumper crowds. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. They showed up a little bit later. Uh, so, unfortunately, we weren't able to show it among the huge crowd. Um, but the following night, we uh, went over across the street, which I it was about a mile. So, I had to ride. I rode the horses, bareback, <laughs> in a halter, and ponied the other one. People were giving me really funny looks. Down um, the road? Down the road, they have like a horse path where where people ride, but it's about a mile. Um, So I rode them. Elisa, can I say this before you go on? Can I say this? That's an eventer right there. (laughs) 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 And he should know. Yeah, well, he's married to one. I'm married to one. I know that's an eventer. You wouldn't. You wouldn't have. Easier than hooking up the trailer. (laughs) That's right. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Practicality. I mean, it's all about practicality. Yeah. They told me, they're like, you can look up the trailer. I'm like, that is so much more work. I'll just ride the horses <laughs> over there. And even though we had to ride back in the dark. But they it, they were really good. Um, so we got to go over to the Global Winter Festival, Dressage Festival, um, where they were doing the freestyle. And that was really incredible to watch. And there was a really big crowd. And we actually got to go afterwards. Um, right after the last horse went and right before the awards. Well, it was really funny because a lot of people were leaving and then they see me go to walk in and then they all stop. <laughs> and then the <laughs> announcer starts and then I go in and then they're all like, you can hear everybody's like buzzing as we go in. Um, and I, it's a little difficult when you have two horses just because of kind of, Figuring out, nego- I'm still negotiating my routine with them both just because they're so fun. I could sit out there all night. But Rue was really enjoying the crowd and he has a little bit more under the hood than Fledge does as far as, you know, tricks as go. Um, and so generally speaking, he's the younger of the two. Rune is four and he can be a little ADD. Like he's very goofball loves food he almost molests you i mean he's really weird because he like like the horses will sniff you but he like sniffs you and then he like licks you and then it's like okay Ru, okay this is getting inappropriate you need to like stop <laughs> was he over so licking funny. the audience <laughs> oh he's so funny but he sir he was fantastic they had to go in that arena cold uh he didn't look at anything and he he performed and he laid down and he sat and he did all the things that he needed to do. And, um, so they were, and, um, it was pretty funny because, uh, my friend that I had holding fledge, she said that he started getting antsy as soon as he heard the music because he knew he was supposed to be doing something. So it was, it was pretty cool. And one of the, just for the, um, dressage riders, right before I went in, she's like, have fun out there. That, the, it, you know, the atmosphere is pretty energetic. And I was like, well, great. I'm going out there bareback. I had the bridle on one, but I took it off and just used a neck rope. And, um, but they, they, they like that stuff. They really enjoy kind of showing off and, and, uh, it's what really makes it fun is when you feel your horse feeding off of it and when you get a response from the crowd because it is pretty impressive what they can do. So, it was a lot of fun. But uh, back on the topic of 
they weren't able to show the trailer at Global, but uh, we had a lot of people coming up to us, wanting to, to pet the Mustangs, asking about the Mustangs, and that is really what we're out uh, trying to do. So, well, um, that's that's terrific, and you know, you're. you're I admire you. You you do so much. I mean, you have two horses. You're 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 taking the Mustangs and you're heading up to northern Florida. You're heading to the other side in Tallahassee for a show called Red Hills, which is a, a three star event on the calendar. First three star event on the calendar eventing calendar here in the United States. You have two horses running there, so you're getting those horses legged up and ready to go for a for a you know a, a multi star event. And then you also are doing these things for the Mustangs. You know, good on you for for putting all that effort into everything. What a lot of a lot of work, and I hope it really pays off for you as well. Oh, thanks. Well, yeah, it can be interesting as far as like you kind of have to switch gears a little bit, but you never get bored. <laughs> um, so uh, you also never have a life, but we're not going to mention no, that part. Well, the life is forces. My husband knew that coming in, so. Um, was he a but, horse? We, we always ask this question. It's a right, common, yeah. it's, it's since we started the show. Alina, go ahead. Uh, w- was he a horse? Was he a horse guy? Well, oh, no, oh, right, no. right, right, right. No. No? <laughs> Thanks, <Glenn. laughs> Like, what? <laughs> I have different questions. <laughs> Not necessarily was he a horse guy. <laughs> was he a horse guy? <laughs> no, he Does, was, he was not. I found him. He's a, he's a, he's a tech guy who works at Emory, actually, philosophy as well. And, um, but now he's a horse guy. Like when we had that really bad storm in Atlanta where snow came, I had to compete and he actually had to take care of 15 head of horses for me. So he, he's pretty amazing and he loves the horses and he does a lot of the filming and all all my website stuff. So he, he is a horse person now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's the answer we were looking for. Yeah, Although that's I have happens. to point out that you started to answer, or you started to say, <laughs> I found him. I just the way him. we say, just the way we say, I found my horse. horse. <laughs> I well, found my horse. I on did. That. Exactly. Because I, I, we were both in an online dating service. And so I found him. Just like oh, horses really? classified. Yep. So. Which yeah, one was it? I have to ask you which one it was now. Uh, it was plenty of fish. I've oh yeah, heard yeah, I've heard of that one. I've never heard, heard of that. Yeah, one. it's free, you know. And when you're a, a horse person, and where I live is on a mountain, and you don't really have access to people, so I Horse-ish. just went. <laughs> yeah, I just went forward, uh, treating it like I was looking for a horse. You have certain things you look for, and you don't settle. So <laughs> you're I, such a horse you know. girl. It's so well, cute. you know, it's hard to find. Sometimes they say it's harder to find the right horse than it is to find the right man. So oh, if you yeah. can, do, if you're good at finding good horses, then you know where to look for good men. And apparently, That's she's right. Cool. And apparently, plenty of I fish did. is it. <laughs> good girl. <sighs> well, thanks. Now tell us uh, what what you have coming up here. You you have a couple of horses that are at higher levels in eventing. Uh, tell us who you have running this weekend at Red Hills. Right. So, uh, currently this week I'm at my dad's farm in Tallahassee. Uh, my dad's Rick Wallace and I'm staying at, uh, Cherry Hill Farm. So that's been great because we were able to ship back from Wellington and kind of gear back up and tune everything up for, uh, tomorrow we go over to the showground. And, uh, I have two horses competing. I have a Australian thoroughbred called Simply Priceless who I've had a little less than a year. And he's owned by uh, Jill Hopcroft. And I'll be competing in the two-star um, with that horse. He's super talented. I've already done an advance on him this year. And, um, you know, he's a he's not an easy horse, but he is really amazing. And he is a cross-country machine. So I'm pretty excited for Red Hills. Um, the dressage can be a little bit difficult for him just because he, like, trolls. The trolls come out to scare him sometimes, um, <laughs> you know. So as long as the invisible trolls don't come out, I can I can tell him it's okay, and we should be able to put in a good a good uh, our foot forward. And the goal is hopefully to get to Rolex next year <clears throat> with that horse. So big things for him, 
And then I have a super talented uh, Dutch warm blood that I found as a five-year-old. He's now seven. And he's owned by uh, Rosemary Blaine, who actually owns the farm that I'm based out of in Jasper, Georgia. And he is a really spectacular horse, and he's doing the one star, and he just came off of a prelim win at Rocking Horse. Uh, super, super talented. And um, as long as he doesn't kill me, because it's cows, my dad has cows as neighbors, and he thinks that they are alien that eat Dutch warm blood. <laughs> and especially when they moo, they are, that's their calling for when they've killed one. I mean, <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> so... I'm, I can't wait to get over to the showgrounds tomorrow so he'll, like, relax because he's all tripped out about stupid cows. So. <laughs> it's amazing what, you know, you got these big horses, you got especially the warm bloods. They just seem to have, they all have this one thing that just gets them, and it's, it's, it's well, the stupidest stuff sometimes. Uh, <laughs> they obviously stupid to you. don't have any cow-bred horse in no. them whatsoever. <laughs> they are obviously <laughs> European where there's no cows, because he, this is not my first warm blood that's freaked out over cows. I mean, like, their heart comes out of their chest. But he's been a little bit of a, he's generally a really good horse, really funny horse, but as soon as we got here, he sliced his eye open, like, right above his eye, and, you know, you can't use any met drugs to sedate. Oh, because that's right. Of, uh, FEI. You're so and close so to the, the show. Vet, right. We we're so close. So the vet had to come out and we ended up putting staples in his eye. Ugh. And we twitched him. And, you know, the vet's like, okay, are you guys ready? And we're like, yeah. Because you know, you're expecting. You know, she put the first staple in. The horse lowered his, her he- his head and she put like eight more staples in. She's like, well, I put. Where's my suture kit? <laughs> I should have just sutured him. But so he's a funny, funny horse, and it's been a little bit of a difficult trip for him. But uh, he generally performs really well, so I'm not too worried. He'll settle in. I love you, guess the Mustangs for just hanging out, laughing. Uh, well, no, they're being silly horses too. Like today, Rue jumped out of his pasture, and I'm like, what? What are you doing? No. So he, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, hi, mom. He's going to eat grass over here. Like, oh, you have him in the oh, wrong business. It's just one of those trips where it's like, what now? <laughs> Silly horses drive me nuts sometimes. But they're they're good. They got uh, yesterday off. And so uh, I get to go back to work with them today. And... um Rune will be preparing for the CIC three-star test ride, which will be really fun. So explain um, to people what that is, for those that don't know eventing and what, what, the, what a test ride is. Right. A test ride, generally they have at every uh, FEI event, and that is to um, kind of <coughs> let the judges get familiar with the test and get everybody on the same page before the first real competitor comes in. And it's the dressage so, test you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is the dressage test. So, um, you know, so we have a Mustang doing the, the, uh, test ride for the three star event. That's correct. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Good so, for you. Yeah. And he, that one's Rue and he's been, uh, I got him in May. So he's been out of the wild a little less than a year. So, and apparently he will have no trouble with the jumping events because, um, yeah. you know, four-foot fences aren't no. a problem. <laughs> no, that one can jump five foot. That's why that one is uh, hopefully going to be an event horse. Um, so, well, yeah, no, le- they can jump, that's for sure. Elisa, where can people find out more about you? Uh, they can find out more about me on, uh, they go to www.wallaceeventing.org. And, um, Wait, so TeamWallace.org? Maybe WallaceEventing.com. Oh, geez. I can't remember. My husband's <laughs> going to kill me now. Um, <laughs> is he in charge of marketing? Here, I'll look it up for you. It is... Um, it is I think it's .com. It is... Uh, <laughs> you're gonna, he's really going to be... He's really going to be mad at you. It's TeamWallace.org. No, that's my dad. Oh, that's your I'm dad? Wallace of, I'm Wallace Eventing. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, we're gonna. Lena I'm gonna do a up. Google search here, and it's it gonna come. While up, she's doing that, no, it's dot com. It's dot com. It's WallaceEventing.com. Okay. 
Hey, um, where yes, can people so, find the movie? Now, is it a, a, out in theaters? Do they watch it on Netflix? They wa- How do people watch um, it? They are, it's in select cities is where they're premiering it. I believe they're going out to Texas next. Um, like I said, they're showing it in West Palm Beach. And then I think they're doing another premiere out in Texas, but it, select cities where it's being uh, opened up. And... That's basically all I know. But they can they can find out more information if you um, go to the American Mustang Movie dot com, I believe. It's American Mustang the Movie dot com is what that one is. Um, yeah. and they can check out I'm looking at right now there's a section for see the film and where you can see it. And I'm sure it's gonna be out on Netflix and you know, all the places right. here very shortly as mm-hmm. well. This is great. Thank you so much, Elisa. We we thoroughly enjoy having you on uh, the, the shows here at the Horse Radio Network, and we appreciate all your efforts on behalf of, of the Mustangs. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Now, that's a young woman who's doing, uh, who has done quite a lot. So I'm interested to see where she goes from here. And I want to see the movie. I do want to see the movie, see, you know, check out that. Uh, you know, you you had the opportunity to interview one of the players in the Mustang world. Remember, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah, you, know, you were saying yes, ma'am, to her. <laughs> I was saying yes, ma'am, to her. Yeah, she's one of those people who deserves your respect. Absolutely. Tell her. Tell everybody who we're talking about. So, yes, Madeline Pickens. She is the rock star of the Mustang world. She's done a lot, which is a term that doesn't even describe begin to describe what this woman has done. But Madeline Pickens has done a lot to support the plight of the Mustangs. Well, very good. Speaking of which, speaking of unbroke horses, I'm heading off to Road to the Horse next week in Lexington, Kentucky. We're going to be doing the morning show from there on Friday morning uh, from Horses in the Morning from <laughs> You're Lexington. You're going north. I'm going north. I'm hoping it warms up by then. No, but they just had 10 inches of snow or something yesterday with ice and everything else. So uh. I'm hoping that that all goes away. Um, we're going to be at Road to the Horse. You know, it's a terrific event. You can learn more at RoadToTheHorse.com. But they, uh, you know, we've talked about it a number of times here in the show. I don't think we probably need to review what it is. Uh, we will have a booth there. So if you see me at the booth, stop and say hi. And we definitely love to meet our listeners. What days, uh, do it, what days does it run? It runs from next Thursday, uh, the 13th? 13th through the 16th. Well, on the 13th, it's going to be 38 degrees. Oh, I need to bring a coat? Yep. <laughs> Apparently hats and gloves. <laughs> yep. Have fun, buddy. <laughs> yeah. You're just loving this. Aren't you? <laughs> so, Although I well, am a little jealous. No, I'm a lot jealous that you get to go to the road of the road to the horse. My only consolation is that it's going to be freezing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be indoors though. I'll be at the it'll be at the Lex or at the Kentucky Horse Park in the brand new stadium there. So that's gonna be a that'll be a lot of fun too. Me and about ten thousand of my friends. It always sells out. I'm looking forward to being there and to bringing you some coverage from there. We'll try and get some interviews done as well. Well, Mary Kitzmiller, who she talked about, uh, has been a guest on our shows uh, before, and she'll be there. She's part of the Road to the Horse this year, and we'll get an interview with her, I'm sure. So we're looking forward to uh, seeing some people that have been guests on our shows over the year here. Helena, a lot of them are, you know, are competing at Road to the Horse this year, so Check out the full details at RoadToTheHorse.com, and I'm looking forward to seeing a number of listeners have let me know that they're going to be there, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all. The other person that's going to be there I just found out this week, and I wanted to give you a quick report. You know Ellie, who um, we have on the show. We had her on last week, Ellie O'Brien, who does training tips with us from New Zealand. Is not New Zealand anymore. She flew in last Friday. They have officially now moved to the Carolinas to to Charlotte. And she informed me that she's going to be over with Dan James at Road to the Horse. So I'm going to get to meet her in person. That's so, awesome. I'm yeah. glad she made it safely to the States and that you guys get to spend some quality time together. Yeah, That's she, great. She was a little concerned about how cold it was because she in New Zealand it's summertime right now. And she <laughs> should be concerned about how cold it is. <laughs> so she's. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Ellie next week as well. So we're come by and say hi if you're a listener to the show and... Uh, uh, it'd, be, it'd be terrific to meet you and get a picture with you. Let's take a break. No, we don't have to take a break. We have no breaks to take. What we have to do is play the tech and have it music. Music. 
This Tack and Habits segment is brought to you by Karen Berkmeyer Home, kitchen and bath designers. You can find them online at karenberkmeyerhome.com or just surf on over to Stable Scoop and we'll provide links to karenberkmeyerhome.com. Thank you, Helena. Well, my product this week is something that I tested out for the first time over the weekend. You know, despite my pony, a scooter, being so popular for rolling in water, yeah, the no little video kidding. we did, it's up to 2.6 million views. That Holy cow. I know, it's crazy. But anyway, people think that because my pony goes out there and rolls in water that he actually likes water and he actually likes getting a bath. The furthest can be from the truth. He hates getting a bath. He doesn't like the hose. He doesn't like the wash rack. He doesn't like anything about the ba- bathing process. Apparently, he likes to be self-bathing. Is what it's I self-bathing, heard. exactly. Yes. He just likes to do it himself. I On get his that. own terms. <laughs> I'm the same way. Yeah, but he does it in muddy water, so that doesn't help us out. I'm the uh, same way. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was something about you. Now... What, so what, you know, you have to do the hose and then you have to scrub them down, you know, get the sponge out, do all that stuff that you do to give a horse a bath. Well, I found the perfect cure to that problem last weekend, and it's the horse car wash. And what I mean by that is a product called Herbal Horse Wash from Healthy Hair Care. Herbal Horse Wash is this jug. I don't know if it's about a gallon in it or uh, 32 ounces. Yep. So there's 32 ounces in it, and it has that little attachment at the top where you can hook your hose to the top of the bottle. And it becomes your sprayer. And what it does is it's just like the car wash. It mixes the soap in with your spray. Okay. Coming out of your hose. So what you do is you just hook it up. You take the whole jug and you use the whole jug to wash your horse. And it is the coolest, easiest thing ever. I never took the sponge out. I never had to scrub him. This stuff really, really works. And when I was done, he was clean. It It is amazing stuff. It makes him smell good, too. You didn't have to, like, rinse him or anything? Then what you do is on the little little nozzle at the top of the bottle for the hor- herbal horse wash, you just put it to rinse, and you use the same setup to rinse him off. It's just like washing your car at the car wash. Oh. It truly is. And it works. I don't know what is magic in this. Uh, it has it has all natural ingredients like uh, ginseng and alf- uh, it has alfalfa in it. Actually, I'm surprised you didn't want to eat the bottle. Uh, wheat <laughs> well, that's what I was. Licorice. That's why I asked you in the beginning if you could use it on yourself because I was like, ginseng root, alfalfa, wheat germ, Aloe licorice. Juice. It probably smells Soy. amazing. It does, uh, and and it, what smells amazing? It has arnica montana flower oil. That's which is good. Th- where where the you know smell comes from? No, no, but no. It, the smell's got to come from the licorice. Oh, the, and the ginseng and all that. The stuff. arnica is um, it's like a muscle soother. It's like good for like arnica is good for bruising and injuries and oh, stuff really? like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so about so it's it looks like in the picture that you have it's a it's thirty two ounces. How much of that bottle do you use per? That w- is the amazing part. Okay, is you get thirty washes out of a bottle. It doesn't use much at all. I was surprised because I was expecting to see the whole bottle get sucked down, you know? Yeah. And I gave him a normal length shower, you know. You know, he's a pony, you know, for a pony. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, Jennifer uses this to wash Beaker, and it is it just works. It's I'm Jennifer you, it approved? It's Jennifer approved, right, and it's horse deal. husband approved. That's a big if you deal. have a husband that, you know, will not do ba- baths with their horses or help with baths with the horses... Just let him play with this toy because it is just like washing a car. <laughs> it truly is. So how now do you fi- how do you um how do you measure out the amount? You don't. The bottle does that. The bottle sucks up what it needs. The bottle uh, sucks up what it needs. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you just plug it into the hose, point and wash and shoot. away. Yep, you put it on wash mode. You know, there's a nozzle or a uh, dial on the bottle. You put it to wash, and then you point and shoot, and you wash your horse. Are you telling me it's idiot-proof? It's pretty much idiot-proof. And then you put it on rinse. I figured it out. Of course it's (laughs) idiot-proof. Then you put it on rinse, and you you rinse them off, and I was done. Literally done. I didn't do anything else except, uh, you know, squeegee them. That was it. You squeegeed, but, but you did have to groom your pony first. 
Yeah, he was pretty clean, so I didn't actually groom him first at all. Um, but he was pretty no. clean, meaning he wasn't. You can't just like he take muddy caked pony in mud. and he spray this stuff. He wasn't caked in mud. I would advise, you know, at least curring him first. And did it? Did does it? Did does it? How did it do in that gunk at the base of the mane? You know, it's like you know. Where 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 actually where he has the most more gunk is on his feet. He has white feet. Uh-huh. You sh- you know all four of his legs are white, and uh, you should have seen how white they were. As a matter of fact, later in the day I came out and the sun was just at an angle. He was out in the field and it looked like his his feet were his legs were glowing. I mean they were just so bright. Did you take a picture? No, I didn't have my camera at of that course. point. But it looks like the little pony was like an angel. His feet were glowing and his star on his forehead was glowing white. <laughs> I mean, you know, I can't spray his face. That I still have to do by hand because he just won't put up with that. Yeah, I don't blame him. But but, uh, but I love this stuff. I highly recommend it. It's like 14 bucks at your tax shop. Uh, it is from Healthy Hair Care. You can go to healthyhaircare.com. And as I said, the 14 bucks will get you like 30, uh, they say 20 to 30 washes. And, and from what we're seeing, you know, with what we've used it for, I would say that sounds about right. Okay. Uh, That's yeah, pretty good. I, I like it. Yeah. I really do like it. You, you need to try it. You really do. Okay. Help. Healthy hair care. Now, we're fortunate in that the barn we're at has hot water at the wash stall. Mm-hmm. So that that's nice, too. I mean, you can make warm water. You know, the, we never had that luxury for 50 years till we moved here. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, my right now. I have the hot water turned off in my barn because my pipes froze like yeah. a month ago. And I am crazy without it. I'm crazy without it. You don't well, realize it help, how it? it really makes a difference in your life and your horse's lives in the winter time. It really does. Up here. It or really even does. just for baths. Like, I mean, you're in Florida. You, you've had a couple of chilly days. It's nice to have that warm water to bathe, to mix a mash, whatever. Yep. Make some soup. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, that's my product. All right. And, uh, so we'll keep, we'll keep trying to find products to review for you. You know, I think it's always more fun when we actually get to test them and review them. But we, we do talk about products occasionally that we haven't done. You know what we haven't talked about in forever? And I thought about you the other day when I was at Walmart and <laughs> I was at the checkout. Thanks very much. Saw... You thought about me at Walmart. <laughs> yes, Appreciate I did. It. I thought about you as a Walmart. As I saw the lady go by in her sweats. No, that wasn't it. Um, I thought about you, Miss Stylish and everything, because of the perky jerky that was hanging at the <gasps> checkout. Oh, perky oh. jerky is everywhere now. I Do know. you remember? We made perky jerky what it is today. <laughs> no question about it. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> it was nowhere. I had to order it online when I bought you the first perky jerky, and now it's in every store in the country. And can you it's imagine? Everywhere. I remember when they first sent me, I don't know if you sent it to me or they, the or perky jerky people sent it to me, but it was a box. It was a case of case. perky jerky. And I'm like, <laughs> what am I going to do with a box of jerky? <laughs> well, just you saying perky jerky people, <laughs> if you ever decided you needed an update on the review of the product, send me another case. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> Yeah, they're in Walmart now. They don't care. <laughs> so, they, but they're not they, yet yeah. in tack shops all across the nation. So perky jerky people, <laughs> we're back. You guys need to be in tack shops everywhere. We talked about that product every week for like a half a year. It's My daughter <laughs> still asks me every time we go someplace. She's like, Mom, is that perky jerky? Perky jerky. <laughs> Like no, Grace, sadly it's She not. was little then too when we were talking about that. Yeah, that was a couple yeah. years ago. <laughs> That's what Perky Jerky does. It leaves an impact on your life. <laughs> There's a down memory lane right there with Perky oh, Jerky. Boy. You know, you can get all the Horse Radio Network shows right on in our app. It's the easiest, simplest way, freest way to listen to our shows. Just search for Horse Radio Network in your app store, whether it's iOS or Android. You can get it on both. No BlackBerry for the two people who keep asking me. <laughs> uh, and it's not going to happen. So, you know. Get a for real the two, phone. The two people. <laughs> Did you just say get a real phone? Yes. Oh, boy. Uh, send your hate mail to Helena at horseradionetwork.com. Yeah, that's fine. I need to. <laughs> be sure to. to uh, be sure to do something. We don't know what. Yeah, be sure to do something. I don't know. Uh, remember, if you want to become an official HRN auditor, go find the link right in the middle of our website at stablescoop.com. HRN and- member. <laughs> Yes. And uh, thanks to our sponsors, Equisketch and Road to the Horse and Karen. Berkmeyer. How do you say it? Karen Berkmeyer Home. Karen Berkmeyer Home. Karen Berkmeyer Home. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for that. And be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Helena can be found at. 
Ah, uh, home? <laughs> no, no, no. I can be found. You can please email me, Helena at horseradionetwork.com. And I am on Facebook, um, but you can find me at Stable Scoop. Well, Stop Helena, it. that's it for this week. <laughs> well, Glenn, that's plenty. But there will be more next week. But until then, happy scooping. <laughs>